Jonathan, I recently tendered my resignation letter because I cannot bear anymore my unhappy relationship with my boss. The head of our department, i.e. the boss of my boss, having discovered this, counter-offered and asked me to stay with a 10% increase in my salary. Hmm, Mark, 10% doesn't sound big unless you're earning 500,000 pesos or 1 million. And the promise of reporting to a different boss. Would you take this? Obviously, you are in a crossroad. Your boss, the boss of your boss is waiting for your feedback. Do you take it or do you don't? And here's the problem. Whatever your answer is, you have to justify it because someone already made a gesture on your behalf. Okay, so before we continue, I want to ask the question first, Y or N, yes or no, would you say yes to this counter offer, an increase on your salary, and it's the promise of getting a different boss because that was your biggest issue why you wanted to quit. Could you please type in the chat box, which one applies for you? I would love to know. Uh, if you were to ask me, I have an issue with 10%. 10% is not a significant increase. I would always go for 30%. Okay. Again, this is a mathematical issue because if you have a very big absolute value, then 10% is big to begin with. But it depends. So it seems like this software engineer, 28 years old, perhaps still in the mid-level, probably this person's earning around 1,000 US dollars to 2,000 US dollars. So a 10% increment isn't that much. I wouldn't immediately take it, but I would do have some reasons why uh, I do have some, how do you call this, some points to take note if I'm going to be declining for it. So majority of our people would say no, okay? I'm getting lots of letter N in the chat box. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's look first at this question. So. Would you ever take a counter offer? So lots of letter yes. Oh, I let me expound the no answer. The no answer is there is no going back once you make the leap. So lots of no, okay. Oh, but I have a few answers here that are different. So uh, Nick would say yes if I'm 100% on board with the company culture, but if it's so, so no, okay. Lexi says, no, I think I deserve at least 20%. I'm with you on that. I know myself and how far I've gone. Hmm. Important to have some self-worth there and awareness of your self-worth. Very good. Uh, looking at the chat box as well, let's look at some more folks. Ooh, lots of no in the chat box. Sam also says, if I could raise 10% to 30%. That would be a very good number also. I would say 30%. You know, even if not just for a counter offer, applying for a new job, a good benchmark is always 30%. You're asking for a raise because you are transferring a new set of skills, a new set of networks, a new set of fresher eyes that the current employees cannot have because they're coming from a different industry or different company as well. Okay, so here are a few tips I would like you guys to consider. So again, let's look at the case study. It was 10%. It's a change of a boss because the biggest issue was being unhappy with the relationship with the boss. And Mark is a software engineer. So Mark, my tips would be as follows. Number one, what is the reputation of the management team in keeping their promises? This sounds very petty and simple, but I want to highlight this, guys. I've experienced many situations where in someone, uh, of course, it's not my personal experience, but I've had friends who had unfortunate cases wherein the counter was not fulfilled at all. They were waiting for the salary raise after three months. It did not change. They were promised that they, were be, that they will be moved to a new company. It did not happen. It only happened on the eighth month. And by those eight months, you've already struggled with the same things. So I want to highlight this. If the company has integrity in keeping their promises, then that means that the change has a big chance that it will, be take, it will take effect immediately. Otherwise, guys, please take note, while we all love our companies and our organizations, some companies are doing it because they simply don't want to lose a person. And losing a person can mean a lot of chaos in the company. You have to turn over new files. You have to file for new documents for HR. It's not going to be a good thing for HR also. 
All of these things are the reasons why retention is always a big, important driver for most companies. Okay, So reputation of the management team, please take note of that. If they do have good reputation, then that means your requests are going to be covered. Number two, will there be any burn bridges now that you've announced that you are leaving? And will those bridges remain to be burned if you stay? Because let's, let's take note of the following. You have vocalized to management the reason why you are leaving. The reason why they're giving you a new boss is because it's been clear to everyone that you're not getting along well with your manager. If you stay in the company, please take note that that relationship remains to be sour and it will take time or sometimes it will never heal at all. So my question is, if you're transferred to a new department, what is the chance that you are still going to work with this person? And what is the chance that the friends of that person you didn't like, such as your boss, will end up working with you? I want to highlight this because transferring to a new department or to a new chair or to a new uh, place in the company does not guarantee that you're going to be avoiding this person. If you are working in a very tight-knit and close company, there's a big chance that you will still be working with them. And that can be a big issue for your satisfaction with your job. Okay? Those bridges are likely burned already. You might even continue to burn more because if this person has other allies, and I want to highlight this, you know, in many industries, we have what we call as like warlords. They have their own communities and you know, they operate as if they have their own tribes. Be careful about that because if you're gang, if you're against one person, you're against the entire gang or the tribe as well. Okay. So I want to highlight that. Okay. I want to also share this uh, point from Ron. If the condition was already known to the other managers, that means they've been complicit on what you went through and only offering now that you've decided to leave. You know, I so agree with this. That there is a point of betrayal that I feel here, and that is, did it even take someone to resign just for you to make those changes when you could have done these changes from the very start? So it's a sign that this is a kind of company that doesn't act fast. So, you know, at some point, it's a company worth leaving for reasons that if they were really a good company to begin with, it did not take a resignation uh, letter for them to act on it. So Grace also sharing, better resign and value self-worth. Look for the boss who could really stand on talents and see your value. Okay. Hermione also says, better leave that environment. Usually they do have their factions. And factions do exist in a lot of organizations. Okay. The bigger the organization is, the more there are factions, not only among departments, but also within the departments. Okay. Third one. Did you plan to leave because of those two changes only? Or is there a deeper reason that this counter will not be able to address? So we are very clear that there are two reasons why this person wants to leave, Mark. And he says it's because of a bad boss, not having a great relationship. And also, uh, you know, the salary could be better. That's why you're being countered for an extra offer. My question is, if those two things are already met, does that cover your happiness already? Or are there other reasons? Reasons such as, for example, you know, you're not growing anymore. You're not learning new things. You've been in the company for five years and nothing has happened to you. This is actually a good way out. It's, I'm not saying it's a sign, but if those reasons keep on like being on top of each other, like uh, a snowball that accumulates over time, then you have other reasons to leave. And this is a good time to exit Right, So I want to highlight this because don't treat the counter as a band-aid solution. It is flashy because you're getting an X percent salary increase. You're being moved to a new department. But will that solve everything? Or do you really, really need a new environment, a new set of friends, a new job that excites you? Sometimes these other reasons are the real reasons. And we're just using the relationship as the excuse. Okay. It's sometimes we use it unconsciously as our press release. So be careful also about that. Talk to yourself. I would do some introspection. And sometimes a good way to do some introspection is to talk to yourself on a third person point of view. You know what I would do? I would say something like, Jonathan, you want to quit because blank. As if you're talking to a different person. That's very powerful. Why? When you talk to yourself 
from a third person point of view, you become more impartial. You become more objective. 